very important, of course, that the uh, application and that the project responds to the priorities of cooperation project. Quality of content and activities. This is um, part of the scorecard. The question is, how will the project be implemented? There is a question that can be a bit of a, it's not a trick question, but it can be tricky to understand how this is meant. The question is, how is the budget proportionate to what the project implements? That just means, have you thought about how much the different aspects will cost? And what they will be looking for here is a balance behind the costs. So will you be spending over half of the project costs on just running the project and on paying project coordinators just to run the project? The answer for that should be no. Um, or will you be spending more than half of the money on real artistic costs or mobility, uh, something that will actually help you achieve the project and get the people working rather than just managing the project itself? Can I just have a quick one on that? Um, and communications, how you're going to communicate your wonderful successes from all the glorious activity. Um, don't, don't underestimate the amount of costs that you might want to put towards that. Um, because, yes, of course, one wants to focus on what you're going to be doing together. But actually, the European Union is an economic development agency and it likes to see a euro for its pound. I can't quite make that metaphor work um, without getting very Brexitly tied up. Um, but you know, you can see where I'm going with this. So please don't underestimate the amount of, 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 of budget that is proportionate in terms of this particular issue to communicating and who you're going to be communicating with and the costs inherent in that. Um, going back to this question of the quality of the content and activities, they, I hate to say they, it sounds terrible, but what you will want to demonstrate is also how good the project is going to be. Um, and I think under Arts Council England, they will be looking at uh, questions of excellence. So this, this concept and idea of artistic excellence this is kind of what this applies to. So how well will the project be run? How experienced are the professionals that will be running this? Um, and how, how does what you will be doing really have an impact and really have an influence? Are these tried and tested methods? Are these existing platforms that you'll be working with? So say a festival or a certain channel or European networks. So they will want to, sorry, I will always rephrase this. You will want to make understandable how well the project will be run. So this is kind of what the quality question is about. And back to what Jonathan was saying, um, communication and dissemination, this is really, really important. And these are two different parts, actually. Communication is how will you communicate the project? So a website, perhaps, for the project, social media, perhaps, for the project, flyers, a comms strategy for the different aspects of the project. Will each partner in their own country have a comms plan? Will there be a central comms plan? Will you have a online identity as the project? Will you be tweeting and uh, running a Facebook page as the project, as the voice of the project? Or will this be sort of flowed through your existing partner organizations, comms, networks? And if either or any of the above, you'll need to explain how and why that is useful and beneficial, for example. Um, of course, you will want to put the EU logo and the credits of Creative Europe on everything that you do. Programs, prospectus, this is, this is very, very basic stuff. Um, but you will want to go beyond that um, as well. One of the questions is, for example, how will um, the ideals of the European Union be made visible. I can't remember the exact phrasing for this, but this is under the E questions, under communication. Maybe someone can find that. 
Um, but again, this kind of flows into the question of why are we going at this at a European level? Why the interest um, across different countries to be working on a project on capacity building for um, visual arts spaces, for example. Um, and then the dissemination side is also really, really important. The dissemination is about um, sharing the learning, sharing the experience of being involved in and of running a cooperation project with your peers in the wider sector, people that aren't within the tighter network that aren't in the tighter cooperation project, but the other visual arts space that operates in a similar way and that might be able to glean a little bit of experience and knowledge from having been in contact with the project, for example. Will we be putting forward a guide to this is a really good way um, on how to run a theater production at European level in different European <coughs> languages? online resources, for example. This is all behind the question of dissemination. How are you going to share the experience and the benefits of having worked and of working, even during the project, on a multi-partner, multi-country project? Because the short version is, this shouldn't just be for you and the partners and the people who came to events. This really should aim to influence the wider sector. And I will try and skip back to an earlier slide. Um, here we go. Because ultimately what cooperation projects should also aim to do is strengthen the sector's capacity to operate transnationally, promote circulation of works and people, so see how through your dissemination plan, you can show how your project will, to a degree, change the world roughly along these lines. So if you can cross-reference or refer back to how, uh, how much of a creative your project, your um, application is, the better you will be doing at scoring the points. And hopefully, the better your project will be at um, achieving its aims. Right, and then on to the quality um, of the partnership. The quality of the partnership is really important. This is where you talk about how the partnership formed, whether it came around an idea, whether it came around an existing partnership. Both of the above are fine, or a mixture of these are fine, but you must be able to show how much of a tight-knit partnership this is, and how this will make the project even better by you knowing, trusting, and understanding each other as partner organizations. This sounds a little bit like your average relationship, and that is probably because that is exactly like it is. Those who have run cooperation projects here will probably be nodding, but you will be spending a lot of time with your partners. You will be spending time arguing about money, budgets, what constitutes timely email response, for example, um, how you as a partnership will be reporting on your budget, on your finances, and planning, you will be spending a lot of time with your partners. So um, it is very good to provide reassurance and explanation for how much of an excellent partnership this is. And you will do that by saying how you will be sharing the tasks of the project. You will not want to say, oh, the lead partner is doing everything and telling every partner what to do. They're doing all of the heavy lifting, and we, the other partners, are just standing by for instructions. This is not what you will want to put in the e-form, and probably also not what you, what you will find desirable as part of a useful partnership. So you will want to preempt these kinds of questions and expectations of uh, shoddy partnerships, last minute applications. So this is also useful for you as a partnership to think through how you will be running the project. Because by writing an application together, by responding to these kinds of questions, it will, in a way, already 
preempt these kinds of difficult questions of how well do you know each other and how well will the project be run? There we go. Relevance, quality of the content and activities, communication and dissemination, and quality of the partnerships. So lead partners. The lead partner is the one organisation that leads it and that is in charge. Then there are full partners. Full partners have to come from that list of countries. And money can flow to them directly. Although actually, it all goes through the lead partner and then is disbursed. There are then associate partners and third country partners. Now, up to 30% of the total project spend can be spent outside the eligible EU area. But money cannot flow directly to non-full partners. So you have to think about a clever way of constructing a financial relationship <coughs> between your non-eligible countries and effectively your lead partner, because that's the way the money is going to flow. So you can do it, but you'll need, at the very least, an additional bilateral agreement between those two boards of those organisations, as well as the rest of the partnership signing up to that bilateral agreement.